Hello, I'm Dr Helen Caldwell and along with some of my colleagues I'm going to talk about the theme of technology outdoors, using mobile devices to explore the physical world across the curriculum. I'd like to introduce Dr Emma Ewell, Karen Woolley and Jean Edwards who all work with me at the University of Northampton. We share an interest in using educational technology and we have individual expertise across the fields of outdoor learning, English, art and physical education. We've worked together over the last five years on an international project called Digital Learning Across Boundaries. We've explored themes with our European partners, such as technology outdoors, and built intercultural understanding through connected classrooms. We'd like to share some of the strategies and apps and tools that we've used on the themes of outdoor art, physical education and wild writing. Art found on the ground. When you're working outside to make art using only the materials available on the ground, digital technology is essential if you're going to keep a lasting record of your art. At the QR code you can see some examples made by artist James Brunt, who works in this way, and you can read about his practice. Your art will look different depending on where you are and what season it is, that's all part of the challenge. Making obvious or subtle changes to the landscape around you makes you and the audience of your art observe more carefully, which is crucial to making and viewing art. This is such place-specific art that it is great for swapping with pupils in other places, then you can compare environments and collaborate together. Art, composing with photos. Using mobile device devices to take photos to use as raw material can be a creative way of making a visual composition. At the QR code you can see some examples by photographer Phil Barnett who often uses pic collage type apps to remake parts of photos into new compositions. It's possible to use any photos to do this, but once you start experimenting with it, you begin to look at the environment in a different way, seeing potential for your compositions everywhere. You might compose an abstract or a representative image, focus on colour, pattern or line, or just have fun painting with photos. It's easy to take this approach into drawing, collage and printmaking as a next step. So I'm going to talk to you about um, an AR app called Scavenger, which allows you to um, design, create and participate in scavenger hunts using augmented reality. So the scavenger hunt consists of checkpoints, which are superimposed into the user's surroundings, providing uh, you with a compass and distances to guide the user to the next checkpoint. Each checkpoint presents a different message um, that you can design. So this can be information on where to go next, um, a multiple choice question, or one of the ones we've used in physical education is tasks, fitness task. Um, the user can choose where they play in their space and you generally need an area of about, about four by four meters or eight by eight meters to work in. So it would work in your school halls and it would work in your playgrounds and local outdoor areas. So some examples that you might use from physical education, uh, particularly key stage two, it's really good for orienteering, um, allowing the children to work individually or part of a team. And it could also be incorporated into a running activity, uh, which could be either collaborative or competitive. Um, children in your upper key stage two, um, it's a very usable app, so they could design their own scavenger hunts for um, the younger children, perhaps, or other children in their class. And that, the ability to add multiple choice questions is really helpful. So it's, it's quite good for across the curriculum in terms of um, understanding their knowledge that they have perhaps for science or geography or math depending on what topic you wanted to do, if you wanted to make it a little bit more active. So um, we tried one which was the theme of a, an exercise circuit. So basically um, at each checkpoint they're given an instruction to perform an exercise and then they move on to the next one. So a bit like circuits. Um, and with a big enough space you can run between these checkpoints so the, the amount of physical activity that you're doing is increased. Um, you could also, like we did, we had questions on there about physical activity, so about why we warm up, uh, different um, muscle groups or parts of the body. Um, and final checkpoint, we thought we'd have a little bit of fun with the children and we got them to select a GIF from um, a variety of the ones that they could pick to show how they felt after completing the task. 
Um, what we have found is it's accessible to a range of learners, um, you know, particularly with different needs. So the way in which they move is not dictated as long as the mobile device can be transported. Uh, you can choose the dis distance moved and the action given or the task given at each checkpoint can be designed with the age, development and needs of the children in mind. So you'll find some um, helpful videos on the QR codes there as well. The outdoor environment can be a wonderful way of stimulating all of the senses to inspire writing. I'm going to suggest some simple apps on the theme of wild writing. The first is the idea of walking a line and stopping at designated points to record what you can see. This is inspired by the work of the artist Richard Long, who made art by walking in landscapes, turning walks into text works and making sculptures along the way. In our example, the idea was to walk 15 steps, look down and to simply record what you can see. The poem and the images are then recorded using an app called Pic Collage. A second idea is to capture the secret life of the outdoors by bringing inanimate objects to life and making them talk using the app Chatterpix. This is a great way to build empathy for the environment and to think about the possible characters and feelings of our familiar objects and how they might engage in conversations with each other. I'm going to introduce you today to an app called Home Court. Home Court uh, reaches all ages and during the pandemic, we've had home court competitions across my family. So I've got children aged 14, 15 and 17 and my husband's 45 and so am I. And we have been really busy competing and trying to beat our high scores. I've also managed to get my brother's kids involved, which are 9, 11 and 13 and my parents involved um, one at 74 and the other at 79. So you can see that this app really does reach all age groups. So the first game that we play on there is the Try Reaction game, which has no equipment involved with it at all. You need to um, download the app, it's free, and you need to press the Try Reaction as your starting attempt. You would place your technology down, so your phone or your tablet down, so that you can be seen fully on the screen and that you will go into what I would call a ghost figure in the middle until um, you see a green tick on your screen. Then you will tap the screen to say go and your time will start. Your hands will react to the different things that are coming on the screen that you need to tap and touch. And as you can see on my slide, um, you can see that there is a number three on the top left hand side. So that's the first sort of three points and you can see a green circle. So your hand would have to wave where that green circle is for you to score a point. The more green circles you react to, the more points you score. However, just as you feel like you're getting into reacting really well, they then start putting red circles up with a white cross in them. And if you knock them, you lose six points. You can see that there is learning about different setups. So you can use a tripod, um, attach your phone or your tablet to a tripod so you can stand a little bit further back um, and try your game. But there is also um, give high knee counters so you can do physical activity and the app will count the number of different moves that you do. Um, there is a single target challenge where you can bounce your basketball and the ball has to hit where the green target is, where previously your hand went. So again, it starts introducing hand-eye coordination and development of skill to, uh, with the technology. Now, this is all based around basketball. But what I really like about it is it works as well towards a fitness plan so that you can develop as a basketball player. Now, with your GCSE, um, GCSE Sports, and um, BTEC Sport, what's really important for those is that you start to develop a fitness plan to develop your skills and um, that you develop your fitness. So lateral quickness, um, cardiovascular fitness um, and a variety of different challenges.
So we've presented the idea of technology as a different lens for looking at the world, and we've tried to show you how mobile devices can be a positive addition to outdoor learning. Finally, I'd like to let you know about three online education courses at the University of Northampton. We have a postgraduate certificate in digital leadership 